For you, radiation was easy and chemo altered your life in so many ways. And you call them your trick or treats. And I love that because you've named it. You, you know, um, tell me, tell us about All right. what has happened. I'll be I hate saying things because then it's it okay. scares it's okay. the little no, ones. <laughs> but I, maybe I am so unique. But it was so funny because you read through all that stuff and you're like, well, that won't happen. That won't. Well, I swear everything happened to me. And I, every time my nurse would call, I'm like, seriously, one more thing. And so every chemo, I would get something different. And I, you know, my face burnt off. I know it sounds really weird, but it was like brick red. And... I, I literally would pilled, it was like a bad chemical pill. Mm. But I always have to think, there are so much worse things in life. And Lisa, my cute doctor, and she'd been through cancer, and my nurse had been through cancer. They're like, they're not okay with it either. I, I think it pains them. But they're, they're so cute, because I would be like, okay, I am so grateful to be alive. Super, super grateful, because, and I expected to be. It better be after all that. I'm just super grateful and I try to help people that come in my shop and I know, and I, I know, I know they wear wigs and I know they're going through cancer. Their hair is shaved off. I mean, I have a great opportunity to give them hugs and then they're like, we're going up to Huntsman for cancer. And I'm like, mm, high five. I did it three years ago. You've got a great team. So, I mean, that's my outreach to the community. I'm not... I'm not one to want to get on a camera and go, oh, I had this great story and I'm so awesome and I lived it and I survived it. I'm like, yeah, the whole thing sucked. <laughs> but, but I'm here. You get to give one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. And that's a very powerful thing because it's when you least expect it when you need it. And something like that I can say, getting the hug when you least expect it is absolutely one of the greatest things. And they so, do. They'll, they'll start crying. Mm -hmm. And this gal had my winter fur on, but it was a different color, and she was so cute, and her husband, and I knew, and I went up, and I'm like, your hair is amazing, and she's like, thank you, it's a wig, and I said, I know, so it's mine, it's <laughs> a different color, yeah. and you know what, I, I think it just empowered her to be okay with what, not okay, but to rejoice, embrace it. try to embrace it, and, and spread it out somewhere where you can, you know, send a little more love. Yes. But I well, told Mandy, I said, I don't think I'm going to be brave enough to take my fur off. <laughs> and you don't have to be. Like, that's not, that's, that's a home, personal That's my choice. home fur, but yes. that's not my work fur. <laughs> Tony. Yes. How has teaching at Huntsman Cancer Institute, Tai Chi, how has that helped you heal? Oh, it's, it's what gets me through every day. I've been practicing for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I've only been teaching at Huntsman for three um, it teaches me to be present and I've learned that everything is temporary and uh, my teacher always reminds me and, and, he, and I always share with my students, you know, if life is really great right now, give thanks because it's going to change. And if your life is shit right now and you're going through stuff, give thanks because it's going to change. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's what life is. It's just Constant. change. Um, the group at Huntsman who I practice with, you know, staff and patients and caregivers, it's just a, an empathy group mm -hmm. that people totally, we can relate to one another and they've given me little insights about what's happened to them, not giving me advice, but just sharing what's happened to them. And if it were to happen to me, that this is what you can do. And uh, it's been really, it's been really, really great. But my thought was the same reason I did this group is if I can help somebody know that a diagnosis is just a diagnosis, it's not a terminal disease right. that Absolutely. you can get through it and breathe through it. So yeah, the group up there is just, just fantastic. Everybody is really great. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amy, I came to the hospital <laughs> as we talked about earlier, but you were in such high spirits. I mean, you were just <laughs> laughing and making jokes and your dad was making jokes and everyone was just so like high spirited. Um, and you know now, like at that point, you didn't know that your nodes, that it had spread into your nodes, right? You didn't, you didn't know any of that. So how are you feeling today? And what do you want people to know? Um, I, st I still feel 
good. It's like when people ask me, how are you feeling? I still, I feel good. Yeah. I'm fine. I don't. And I think it really, it's just because I haven't really started any treatment yet. Like yeah. it sucks. I don't have any boobs left and that kind of sucks. And you still have the sensation that you have boobs. And so that's really weird. But I really, I've, I've always tried really hard, like with my girls. And I think that this is just what's helping is to try and make the best of any situation. I mean, my 11 year old is, is, has an eating disorder and that has probably been harder than so far than having cancer. Mm -hmm. And it's been stressful to try and make sure she gets what she needs. And I don't feel like feeding you today, but I have to because yeah. I have to. It's perspective, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're just, you just can't let things go. And I, and I do feel like everything happens for a reason. And uh, some, for some reason, like we've all got something to learn from this. So I feel like my girls have something to learn and I do and my parents and probably my ex-husband, like everybody I feel like can learn and grow from the situation. Like I said, it's not fun and it's going to suck. And I know there's going to be crappy days and there's going to be I'm not going to feel good and it's not going to be pretty, but there in the end, I feel like in the end it will be okay. There's no other choice. It has to be okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Lydia. Uh-oh. <laughs> no reason to be scared. I mean, you're a runner, you're a go-getter, you, you know, you've said, like, I'm just going to do it. Um, but I feel like, although you've been all that, that this is all giving you such a brand new lease on life. I mean, you've released your depression, you've, you've overcome some things that maybe you would not have faced. So tell me how it feels with this new lease. So it, we used the word surreal before, and I feel like the la I, what I really just went through that in this last year and a half. It's just bizarre. Um, I feel like I'm back to my um, old self, but it is a new normal. There's no question about it. Yeah. You face things in a totally different way. I mean, stupid things. I mean, this is going to sound so trite, but um, last fall, some friends of ours asked if we'd like to go to Lake Powell on their houseboat. The normal me? It's the beginning of the year. I'm not doing that. I'm a teacher. I'm like, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> yes. um, my mom, uh, when she came out for my chemo, we I had made a decision a couple of years ago. She's 79, and I had said, I'm going to spend every Mother's Day with my mom for the rest of my life, for the rest of her life. And who knew that I'd have a, you know, a death threat in my life? Um, right. But anyhow, um, so the very first year after I'd made that decision, I went to see her that one Mother's Day. Next Mother's Day, we're going to Yellowstone together. Well, <laughs> that's, yeah, um, the, those plans didn't happen. My mom came for chemo instead, and I didn't get to be with her for Mother's Day. So Mother's Day's coming around for this year, and I took the whole week off. I took the Good entire week off and went to Yellowstone. I was only taking two days off. I'm yeah. taking the whole week off, went to Yellowstone with my mom, just she and I. And... Um, this summer, I traveled three different times, wore my, my nice sleeve that we get to wear for lymphedema on the airplane, but I traveled th to see three different, two friends, and then um, my mom, spent some time with my mom and my brother and his family. So I feel like I'm just like uh, different. I, uh, the whole fact that I've stepped down and I'm going to do some self-care, I'm going to take care of me, and I'm yeah. only going to teach part-time this school, coming school year, it's like totally different for me. And when I uh, talked to my oncologist about going off the antidepressants, I said to her, we're four days till the last day of school. Um, I um, have a non-medical summer because I had gone through this huge medical summer and then had to go back to work. And I need the rejuvenation of summer. I mean, I, I give it everything I have when I'm yes. teaching and I'm exhausted. And I didn't get that last year. Um, I have a whole um, non-medical summer ahead of me and I'm going part-time next year. I said, I think we're ready to wean me. <laughs> I guess it's called tapering, but I thought it was weaning. So <laughs> who knew? I don't know. But um, anyhow, um, I do feel like I, I approach things differently. I'm very present. I'm very much, um, and I've always been that person, but... Um, you know, I'm going through the grocery line. I make friends with the person behind me and the person in front of me and the checker. And you know what I mean? I just, I'm just that person that it's like, um, everyone has value and everyone has a story and just mine happens to be a breast cancer story, but everyone has their own story, whatever trial it is. And you were yeah. saying there could be worse. Yes. I have four friends with multiple sclerosis. 
I, this is, this finished, I'm on tamoxifen for four more years, but how lucky am I, yeah. you know? And I, yeah. I just, pity party. Right, and I just, I don't know. I, I've always been that half glass, uh, glass half full, but I think I'm like the glass full girl now. Yeah. I don't know, no, I just, I love you it. know, everything yeah. is just, uh, and, I, and that sounds, I don't know, I don't mean to, to I don't want to diminish anyone's feelings because I've ha been at the bottom and I've done all of that. But I feel like every minute I'm alive, I'm so lucky. And I told my husband, I could get hit by a truck tomorrow. I mean, I, you know, every minute is, is every precious. Every minute counts. Every person mm -hmm. you meet is important. And um, I've always been that way with my students as well. But that's just how I feel. And I feel like I want to... I don't know, by example, be just yeah. a, a happy, positive person to others in this life now. Yeah, so. make the most is right. Yeah, every day. Yeah. Yep. So. Thank you. All right, Zero. Ginger. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've just recently been cleared, which, congratulations. Yeah. I mean, that's big. such huge. that's such big news. Yeah. And big. It, it, it gives you a new lease, too. But in our conversations, you've been excited about helping others heal by getting toxic situations out of their life. Mm -hmm. So what is the one thing you let go <laughs> that you uh, <laughs> to move forward? And how do you relate that to others? You know, I went, oh, there's a lot. Everybody, was, everybody comes out of the woodwork, right? When, right? when you get this news and they say, well, what's that? And they want that secret thing that everybody wants mm -hmm. to have that 100% guarantee that we never have to deal with this again. And honestly, it is so complex because we are so unique and we have so many different things. The, probably the biggest thing though that I did was I did a massive negativity cleanse. And there is a direct chart line on my chart from where my divorce mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. And that toxicity left, like that was the main metastasis, right? And I am mm -hmm. a huge advocate for marriage. I, I, I think it's a beautiful thing and I love marriage. Um, but I also understand that if you're in a bad relationship and you're, you're, you're under a lot of stress, um, stress causes dis-ease. And that can change your cell structure, that can change your DNA structure. I mean, they've, they've, science is proving it now. And so for me, it was the biggest thing was how can I do this negativity cleanse? How can I um, identify with myself and say, okay, what, what am I bringing into my space? Um, is it positive? Is it negative? Or not necessarily a judgment per se, but a discernment, you know, because everybody's going to be different according to what they feel is the, the correct path for them. And so I honor that because I don't know your backstory. I don't know what you've been through. I don't, right. I don't know the history, but I know for me that getting out of the negativity and then really stepping into on sacred ground, sacred space, like Brene Brown talked about in the, you know, her books, her books on vulnerability, it's huge to be able to really just start to owning your value, owning your mm -hmm. divine worth, owning the ability to receive, owning all of the, the abundance that's in the world. Um, so there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot. And it's hard for me to say, well, let me take this out of me and you know, pop it into you. Right, because I think each person, each person has a different yeah. thing. Yeah, but. but negativity would probably be my number one start is to really fine tune and to identify, and, and what am I speaking? What am I thinking? Am I, am I speaking negative over my life? Am I speaking you know, positive over my life? But if we can, you know, I think overall that's what I've gained today from this experience is that not only do we honor each other's journeys, um, but we also honor ourselves mm -hmm. in making those decisions that, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm accountable for me. I'm accountable for me and what I have to, you know, do what I don't have to do. Right. And so that, I mean, that is my bigger vision now is to reach 1 million souls yeah. and to be able to provide information and share these things because I, I felt the healing power, if you will, or the influence. Right. And to me, that's what I want to give. Yeah. I want to give that now. It's incredible how just, it changes us and it doesn't all in the same way. It just maybe intensifies those feelings inside that we were meant for something a little bit bigger than we actually wanted to accept at some point. Um, so it's, it's definitely life-changing. Um, but I want to thank 
each and every one of you for being a part of this and for being a part of the Cancer Horizons community. Um, you know, we're so, we're so blessed, really, in so many ways to have each other, to have communities that, you know, want to stand up and um, do something. And what Cancer Horizons has created with helping patients and providing resources is just an incredible thing. And we couldn't have done this without you. Um, so thank you, truly thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you. Thank you.